Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. So recently we got exactly what we all needed, what we've all been looking for, and that's more social media, another social media platform, uh, Threads. This is basically Instagram's version of Twitter, and Twitter is an app I haven't really used for a long time, at least for photography's sake. Um, it's just not really been one that I would enjoy, but I have been having more fun using Threads than I have really any other social media lately, just in terms of talking with other photographers, starting conversations, sharing work. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, probably just because it's the new shiny thing. How long will I continue to enjoy it? Who knows? Uh, but for the time being, I have had fun over there and talking with other photographers. And since it is social media that we're talking about, the one thing that people use it the most for is just spitting out their hot takes. So I asked, what are your spiciest hot takes in regards to photography? And there was no shortage of answers there. So I'm going to go through a few of them today, kind of dissect them a little bit and talk about them. And uh, yeah. Why not? Oh, Faisal Westcott, he says, half the people online wouldn't be photographers if people couldn't instantly see their images on Instagram. I fully agree with that one. Uh, it's a shame, but that one I think is definitely true. I'm sure there are a lot of photographers today who would have never picked up a camera or found photography at all if it wasn't for social media. And through that, it's sort of a double-sided thing where there are photographers who we get to see making new work all the time, and they're great photographers, and, uh, you know, it's interesting to see a photographer's trajectory, like, in real time. It's not like, you know, finding a photographer's work from several decades ago. Uh, it's exciting to see, you know, photographers who are still shooting today and making new bodies of work and, get, you know, gaining inspiration from that, enjoyment from that. But at the same time, through social media, uh, it's like you're getting a few of those gems in there with a lot of just noise. And it's very easy to see if you open up any social media app, Instagram, Twitter especially, uh, it's easy to see that the work that's being made and shared is meant to you know, appeal to the masses. And it's trying to sort of fit in with what's popular or what's trendy at the moment. And because social media is the way it is, it's clear that there are a lot of photographers who are just using social media in general, but photography as like their vehicle of, you know, fame and notoriety and clout. Uh, you know, photography for them is a way to get attention and to be seen as like the cool photographer. And it's very easy to spot that when you see it, as opposed to someone who is making work that really resonates with them, not with what resonates, you know, on Instagram, what people are going to see as like quick kind of eye candy pictures. Uh, it's, it's easy to spot the difference there. So yeah, I would say half, if not more, probably would never pick up a camera if it wasn't for social media. Nikon cameras are just fine. Damn it. Yeah, Nikon cameras have always gotten a lot of hate. I remember when I got my first DSLR, my Nikon D60, that was in like, I think 2007, maybe 2008, somewhere around there. Uh, even back then it was like, oh, it's not a Canon. Like you're shooting, you're not shooting with a Canon. You don't have your Rebel out here. But Nikon cameras have always been and still are great. Uh, I haven't used any of the Z cameras, any of their mirrorless line. But Nikon DSLRs, I used a number of them for years, and they were always solid, and uh, yeah, Nikon cameras are just fine, damn it. Spending all day looking at other photographers' work on social or even in books is subconsciously influencing you slash distracting you from spending time with yourself and allowing you to create a visual style that is actually original. Spending all day looking at other photographers' work, sure, I could see that, because you've got to, you know, make at least some time to make your own pictures if you want to kind of have your own style, or at least to create some sort of, you know, visual style. It's, I see it a little bit differently between books and social media, because books are their own objects, and they're not you know, being fed into anything. Whereas social media, you're seeing the attention that some photos are getting versus others. And I know that definitely influences photographers uh, subconsciously or not. With photo books, I know me personally, like 
I know I'm being influenced and, uh, you know, inspired by the photo books that I consume and the photographers that I really like. Uh, whether or not that's distracting from creating a visual style, I think it's more so trying to improve like visual literacy. Like I'm trying to better understand the decisions I make when I'm actually out making pictures. And it's never meant to try and like replicate what another photographer has done or to shoot like that photographer, but it helps me understand some of the choices I make or even the choices that that particular photographer has made. I think if you're going out to get a picture that's going to, you know, impress other people or you're going out to shoot for other people, for sure, that's distracting and there's like no point in doing that unless that's what you want to do is, you know, throw up Instagram bangers. But if you're trying to make pictures for yourself and pictures that you're actually going to be happy with, regardless if anyone sees them or not, I feel like finding the work that resonates with you is an important thing. So this one's tough. I don't know about necessarily distracting or like taking away from, you know, you doing that. Uh, first and foremost, you've got to shoot for yourself. But I think if you're studying work that does resonate with you and does give you that sort of inspiration and the push to get out the door, um, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think this one might be more of a petty one instead of spicy. It annoys me when photographers refer to medium format as 120 millimeter. 120 is the format name, not a measurement. Yeah, this has bothered me for over a decade now, as long as there's been social media and photographers sharing about film on there. Uh, 120 millimeter. I still see that all the time, and there are a lot of people new to film, and so I never, like, comment and try to like correct anyone when I see it. Um, some people would argue that it's better to correct them so that they don't continue to make that mistake. It's not my business to be policing other people and trying to correct everybody. I don't really care that much. But I guess if you are one of those people, take this as a moment to learn something. It's just 120 and 35 millimeter. Not 120 millimeter, just 35 millimeter and 120. The more you know. Guys making TikTok slash YouTube videos of ambushing mostly women for portrait street shoots and all taking the same picture a million times is just plain weird. It's not mostly women, it's all women. I, I have yet to see a single guy go up to another guy and ask for photos for his TikTok. Uh, it's always a girl. And yeah, it's weird. It just comes across as creepy. I don't care what your tact is or what you do or, or how you do it. That's just weird. It's 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 never going to be anything but weird to me. Um, so much of that kind of stuff on social media in the world of photography has made me just feel different <laughs> than I normally would about being someone who shares about photography on social media because I see stuff like that and I'm like, I should do something completely different with my life. It's just weird to me. It will always be seen as creepy to me. And that goes for boudoir photography while I'm at it. I'll just throw in my own little hot take there. Boudoir photography, especially dudes who just shoot boudoir. Oh, that's your art? Okay. Yeah. Creepy. No, it's not about that. It's about, you know, creepy. I got to share these two because they are the exact opposite of one another. A street photo isn't good just because the subject is interesting. You actually have to compose the photo. And on the flip side of that, the more interesting the story, the less one needs composition. These were not in response to one another. These were just two completely separate takes that were sent in. So I thought it would be funny to share both of these. This one's tough. I'm not a street photographer. Um, and I think this is where this like really, really applies because sometimes you'll see a bizarre moment, something that just seems totally out of the ordinary and it's a memorable photo, but the composition could usually take it or leave it. Usually it's something that could definitely, you know, be improved on. Uh, whereas I've seen very well composed street pictures, but they're not memorable. It's just things lined up nice or someone walked through the one little patch of light and you got a little silhouette 
and it's the same thing over and over. So there's no story there. Which one is more appealing? I really think that's going to come down to the photographer. Uh, I don't shoot street photography. Most street photography isn't for me. There are very few photographers, I think, that uh, are doing something different or, or tapping into something that like I'm actually connecting with. If it's my own photos, which are completely biased, and it's just photos of the people in my life or my family, if if there's like a specific moment that I catch, even if the composition is a little bit off, I'm glad that I got the moment, as opposed to you know a really nice composed photo of just nothing really happening. So I tend to lean more towards the moment than I do composition when there are people involved. I always am a stickler about composition but if there's a moment involved and like a fleeting moment there are people in it and it's moving and things are happening i'm much more interested at that point in the timing and capturing that specific moment before it's gone if it's a completely static scene and there's not really anything going on and i have more time to focus composition obviously that's going to be the focus i think it really just comes down to the moment and the photographer like all of this it's all subjective just like Simon says, Simon says, it's all subjective, all of it. The amount of this is a good photo or this is a bad photo I see all over socials and YouTube is crazy to me. If you love a photo you took, amazing. If you hate a photo someone else took, that doesn't make it bad. Yeah, for me, I usually chalk it up to like, oh, I really like this or eh, it's just not for me. And that's it. I don't really care one way or another if someone considers a photo good or bad i care about what i think of the photo and that doesn't mean i'm the authority on what's a good photo and what's a bad photo i just mean i can only speak for myself and know what works for me what do i like and what just isn't for me and is likely for other people i think critique is a really good thing and and asking people for feedback and especially asking them for what do they not like? What would they change? Why would they change it? That's really, really helpful. You don't want people to just always be saying, yeah, this is awesome. Banger, banger, banger. I hardly know her. <laughs> and I see this sort of thing a lot online where photographers will be arguing back and forth about whether or not a photographer is good. And it's not even a photographer in the conversation. It's, you know, someone completely unrelated to the conversation, but there are photographers debating over whether someone else's work is good or not. And it's like, sure, you can have your opinions. I've never felt compelled to argue for another photographer's work or even my work. If someone doesn't like the pictures I make, that's fine. Like, that's not why I picked up a camera in the first place. But people get very defensive about this sort of thing online, and they want to fight and debate over what makes a good photographer and whether or not their pictures matter. And social media, especially, like the amount of pictures we see and the vast amount of photographers and different styles and different approaches there are, like it just seems like an argument or a debate that will never be settled. And so it just seems so pointless to me. Like the bar for what is a good picture online, like what it takes to please most people, has been lowered significantly <laughs> over the years with social media. And that's just, that's the way it is. Like the amount of pictures that we see nowadays is insane. And people are gonna like what they like and they're gonna be, they're gonna have bias based on all of these other factors, not just a picture they see in a gallery or in a book. Most people, they are getting these pictures with a barrage of other information and other pictures completely unrelated. And it's just, it's all in and out. Like, I don't know. I don't really care enough about photography that doesn't resonate with me or pictures that, you know, don't mean something to me or influence me or inspire me. If it ain't for me, it, it does not exist. That's just, I try to focus on the stuff I do enjoy. That's all. Photographers need to spend as much or more time editing slash selecting their photos than processing. If you post photos, you probably post too many. I agree with this one. Uh, I think people immediately go with their gut and just go for the picture. And when, you know, when they're going through and like selecting and editing things, people usually just go for their gut and then just never return to the outtakes or what they considered outtakes. And your tastes and your eye, it will continue to change. And so take your time in that process because something that you quickly write off from the beginning 
that could hold more weight to it in the future, uh, whether that be in an hour or in a year. Uh, and as well, yeah, if you're posting photos online, you probably post too many. I'm very rarely posting new pictures. I have been working on something that's going to be a book, so I've tried to save as much of that for when the book is ready so that when the book is out, people haven't seen every picture already. But that's just me. Um, that's how I've gone about it, and so I can't really disagree with this. However, I will for the sake of argument because at the same time, who cares? Like... <laughs> I don't have a hard enough stance on this one because if someone is posting something on Instagram every single day, I also get the idea of like, eh, it's just Instagram. Like I don't really, it doesn't matter. Uh, I rarely post on Instagram, but I get that argument as well where people are like, yeah, I just throw stuff up. It doesn't matter. For me, I tend to lean on posting much less, especially when I'm working on a book. However, same time, do your thing. Like, who cares? Nobody wants to buy your NFT. They want you to also buy theirs. Also, nobody over the age of eight should say GM friends ever. Oh, NFTs. How, how are the NFTs doing these days? Is anybody, anybody keeping up on that? From the jump, I have had no interest at all in the whole NFT thing. And it seems like it's all fizzled out. I don't see nearly as much of it as I used to. I used to see it online all the time, and then I would just hit the mute button. It was just so clear, like right from the start, anybody in that whole thing were just trying to cash in and make as much money as they could, however they could. And it was all under this like, no, it's all about like building community and like empowering photographers and you're just, nah, dude, you're just trying to get Bitcoin and whatever else is in that stuff. I don't know. It was all just so silly to me. It is silly. It's been silly. Uh, yeah, had no interest in the whole NFT stuff. The more difficult the process of taking a photo and the more factors involved that could potentially go wrong, the more satisfying the end result when the photo actually does turn out how you wanted. I get what you're saying here, and I agree. It's more satisfying and more enjoyable for you, the photographer. I think this one ties in a lot with another take that was very, very common. A lot of people shared that one, and that is that if your photo is shot on film, that doesn't make it any more interesting, or something to that effect. And I think that is the thing that kind of muddies the water a little bit, where photographers love to say, like, whatever on 35 millimeter or blah 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 on film you see that on twitter on threads on any social media it's always about being on film but i feel like i've seen it more and more in recent years on social media especially twitter or instagram now threads uh, it just feels like if you shot something with a film camera you've got to mention it was on film or like, what's the point? Like, it just seems like that is becoming the reason people take some pictures because most of it looks identical to a dozen other photographers, if not more, who are going to the same, you know, place on the coast or some park out West and they're shooting from the same vantage point on the same film on the same cameras just to get that caption. And if you're enjoying yourself, really at the end of the day, it's all that matters. But I would encourage any photographer to really just focus on, you know, doing your own thing and don't just try to like mimic any other photographer based on what camera they use or film they use or where they decide to go for their Instagram trip. Most of the pictures I've shared so far on threads were made with a Pentax 6.7, which is what I was using for my book. And just about every single reply, people have assumed it was shot with the M11 monochrome. People can't really tell a difference. It doesn't matter. Use what you want to use. But if you're using film, don't forget that caption. And last but not least, from Brian Burks himself, 99% of YouTube photographers are glorified salespeople and everyone is complacent because making videos about shitty gear, bad courses, in vogue topics, and clickbait is far easier than actually making good work that connects with people. 
It's just easier to trick amateurs into thinking you're good by showing off your income that was built on the backs of impressionable young photographers who don't know any better. Signed, fed up photographer on YouTube who has a moral code. I saved this one for last because this is an interesting one to me, being a photographer on YouTube, just like Brian, and I agree with him on this one. If you look at the really big photography channels on YouTube, you can definitely see a common thread. It's every new video about every single camera that comes out once a week from whatever brand or whatever lens that comes out or their new course that's going to teach you everything you need to know about X, Y, and Z. And uh, the clickbait stuff where it's like, you have to have this lens or, you know, if you're shooting cinematic stuff, you have to do this. Like, it's all this very, like, it's clickbait. It's just clickbait stuff. And it is unfortunate because those tactics work and people don't know any better. They think if they follow the template set out by this photographer, they're going to be just as successful as them. And life just doesn't work that way. And as someone who is a photographer on YouTube, this is now something that I'm able to rely on full time and, you know, through YouTube sponsors like Squarespace. They're a sponsor of this video. I know they sponsor Brian's channel as well. You got to pay the bills. It is what it is. Sponsors like that are sponsoring a specific portion of the video, just talking about their service. They're not sponsoring, you know, the whole video and telling me, you know, what videos to make and what my content should be or look like, etc. Uh, I'm very particular about how I work with sponsors. And so I have two sponsors that I regularly work with and that's it. I've done more in the past and over the last couple of years, I've just really pulled back from a lot of that because I found from my own experience that as my channel grew and I started to get, I guess, more opportunities from different people there were times where it just felt no amount of money is going to be worth this kind of exchange just based on my experience several years ago i did a workshop type thing and the way it was pitched to me versus the end result and how it was presented to the public were very different and uh, it left a pretty bad taste in my mouth. I've never talked about it because it's just something I've always kept to myself, but uh, not long after I ended up just asking the people who kind of facilitated the whole thing, like just remove me from the site altogether, like take my portion down, um, just not interested in being attached to it, I guess, because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like something that fit me. And since then, I have been very, very particular about things I agree to do. And I turn down sponsorships or gear reviews or whatever all day long. It's unfortunate because I'm now much more cynical about stuff like that. I think I used to have uh, a bit more optimism in just working in this kind of thing and YouTube and all of that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's unfortunately a lot of people who are just trying to make money and doesn't matter, you know, what the information is or how reliable it is or how useful it is. Uh, it's a business and that's the only way they treat it. And, uh, yeah, if, if anyone's ever, you know, selling you on this idea that they have all the answers and all you got to do is follow their steps, uh, it's pretty easy to see that, you know, it is what it is. So those were some hot takes sent in over on threads. Again, I've been having a lot of fun over there talking with other photographers, so uh, it was fun to bring some of that here on the channel. Let me know in the comments what your photography hot takes are or you know, let me know what you thought about my thoughts today and how I kind of dissected them. We can keep the conversation going down below. And last but not least, I mean, we were just talking about it. Have you ever heard about Squarespace? When I first created mattdayphoto.com, I did it with Squarespace. It was a no-brainer seeing as they had everything I needed in one place, and almost 10 years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it easy to use and easy to do it yourself. They've got drag and drop customization, tons of templates to choose from, and 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. 
You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched the site, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website. Keeping track of the inventory, the shipping fulfillment, it's all been a breeze. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial at squarespace.com. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and that's it for today. So thank you all for watching. I love you very much. I'll see you guys next time.